Hey Cloud Gamers and welcome to the Cloud Gaming Extreme channel, your destination for all things cloud gaming. Today we're having a look at Air GPU, which is a new beta virtual PC service that's popped up recently and we've had the luxury of getting early beta access. This is a beta access service so do bear with it and obviously this is going to be shaped over the next few months. But if you do get in, they have an introductory price of $25 a month at the moment for a T4 rig, and we'll see exactly what that means in just a second. It's also available in the data centers in North America of Ohio, California, and also Central Canada. In Europe, they've got the Frankfurt, Paris, and coming soon, they have a Stockholm, and also a London data center in the next few weeks. If you do get accepted and you do sign up, you can get an extra $5 off if you use the code EXTREME and we'll drop that in the description below so you can get that discount as well. Now setting up your Air GPU is a little bit fiddly to begin with. There are no static IPs at the moment, but the IPs are public. So once you've got Moonlight set up, you just have to re-enter the IP every time you start your machine up. The machine startup is a little bit slow at the moment. It takes between two to five minutes, depending on load times of getting your machine started up. And sometimes I have to go in via Parsec just to wake the machine up completely to get GameStream working. For the most part, this seems to be resolved now as the founder is very quick on Discord to respond to feedback. And we've got a few issues with the Parsec and Moonlight startup instances resolved already. So this is already a much better experience when you are just starting your machine up. Put your IP in and connect via Moonlight. Those that aren't familiar with the channel, Moonlight is my preferred way of streaming, especially for NVIDIA rigs, as it is much more seamless. But let's get into the crux of the machine. We can see that we're getting an Intel Xeon 2.5 gig CPU here. And we're expecting the range to be in this kind of bottom section here as it's only an eight core and also that two and a half gig. So once we run the Cinebench R23 here, it is a 10 minute test, but I'm not going to bore you with the full test. So we'll just skip through the first instance here so you can see how that does. This is running at eight speed and then we'll put the results up at the end. We can see that this eight core two and a half gig does struggle a little bit here and it comes in where we expect around the 4000 mark on Cinebench, which isn't too bad for this type of processor, but CPU heavy games will struggle somewhat. Space wise, we are only getting 256 gig currently and that Tesla T4 is not ray tracing enabled as you'll see shortly. So 250 gig did allow me to install Resident Evil Village, Outriders, Control and GTA 5. So let's go and have a look at how these games perform at 1440p. Starting off with Control then, although the game says that it's ray tracing enabled, obviously the T4 doesn't actually support ray tracing, so these don't really make much effect, except for the fact that it really messes with the FPS. So DLSS does make a huge difference here, so make sure that's enabled, but turn all the ray tracing stuff off as it's really not required. I did leave it on here just to see what the impact was and you can see at 1440p we're still pushing 30 frames per second maxing out that GPU but control looks absolutely gorgeous here at full 1440 and 30 frames per second is not the greatest but again you can easily fiddle that down with a tweak of the settings but we are pushing the limits of the machines here and that's why we're called extreme. I was using control here with the mouse and keyboard as it's a bit easier to aim especially and I did not have any input latency as I was on the Paris data center so my ping was around 20 milliseconds anyway. And as you can see it's looking absolutely fantastic and with a bit more tweaking or running at 1080 you're going to get much higher frames per second. The T4 doing very well here. As we move over to Outriders, we do get a little bit of jitter and this is a known issue with Outriders in general. You can tweak the settings here and obviously depending on the graphics drivers installed get rid of this micro stutter but as far as the actual game and graphics go we can see again we're maxing out the gpu here at 1440 but it is holding 60 frames per second pretty much most of the time again with a little bit of tweaking you'll be able to get that a little bit more stable but we can see that even at this 1440 and high settings it's still looking and performing exceptionally well that micro stutter can get a little bit annoying, but again, with a tweak to the graphics settings or the driver, you will be able to resolve this. You will need to check the Outriders Reddit to help with some of those issues. 
Then moving over to GTA 5, this is obviously one that a lot of people want to be able to play quite well. And this was very surprising for me actually. This is running at 1440 with all of the settings pretty much maxed out. And we can see that we are holding a rock steady 60 frames per second. GPU is not maxing out and the CPU is only hovering around 30-40%. So we are playing GTA 5 here absolutely perfectly. I did switch to the controller for this because I just find, especially with a lot of running around movements and driving, the controller much simpler. So with the wired Xbox Series X controller here, again, no input latency, especially at the Paris data center. But I can't wait for the London data center to come online to give that a try as well. So you can see it's looking extremely smooth and just those micro movements, there was no latency whatsoever. As we move over to Resident Evil Village then to finish, again maxed out on high settings on 1440. We can see again we're holding a rock steady 60 frames per second with no ray tracing enabled because it's not supported on the T4. And again looking and performing absolutely fantastic. So the T4 really does give a bit of varied results depending on the game. But when the game's engines are supporting the graphics properly, we can see that the T4 is more than capable. So at 1080 or 1440, you're going to have absolutely no issues with the T4. 4K may struggle somewhat and you will be limited to 30 frames per second. So I do recommend sticking at the 1080 or 1440 for the T4. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Air GPU and whether you're going to be using it. The 30 credits a month is probably a little bit low at the moment, but they are taking on board your feedback and looking at bigger plans and better plans moving forwards, including some ray tracing rigs further down the line. But do bear in mind it's a beta service and they are looking for your feedback to obviously make those plans better. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things cloud gaming and we will see you next time.